The Lakers report is marching toward 50,000 subscribers, so with that, we're going to do something special on today's show. For all of you who subscribe to the channel, we're going to give you shout-outs on tomorrow's show. So if you bleed purple and gold, this is your one-stop shop for the best Lakers coverage. Just hit that red sub button or utilize that link at the bottom of your screen, youtube.com slash Lakers TV. And with that, let's dive into the latest Lakers news and rumors. <laughs> Laker Nation, hope all of your weeks are off to a great start. This is the Lakers Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Jay Sr. Coming your way on today's program, some notable games unveiled by the NBA. Patrick Beverly. Now, he's with the Utah Jazz right now, but because they figure to rebuild a little bit, could Beverly get dealt, and does he want to go to the Los Angeles Lakers? We'll explore that. Carmelo Anthony potentially going back to the Denver Nuggets, where, of course, he went prior to the New York Knicks as he started his NBA career there and had a lot of individual success, going all the way back to the days of Allen Iverson rocking that Nuggets uniform. And will LeBron James take a pay cut in 2023? Kind of like what James Harden did with the Philadelphia 76ers during NBA free agency over the summer. First up, though, want to break down some of those leaked games in the Lakers' schedule for this upcoming season. And of course, the Lakers, even though they were bad last year, they do have some big draws on the schedule, and that remains to be the case. Opening night, going to take on the Golden State Warriors. Now, last year, this game was at the Staples Center, which is now Crypto.com Arena. This year, going to open up in San Francisco. So you're going to have an opportunity to see LeBron James and Anthony Davis against the reigning NBA champions in what has become a a very good rivalry in the Western Conference. Another big game, Los Angeles Clippers. So for the first time in a little while, Kawhi Leonard going to be on the floor for the Clips and him, Paul George, I think the Clippers are going to be a really good basketball team. This Los Angeles rivalry is certainly on and popping. And then lastly, on Christmas, a game against the Dallas Mavericks, Luka Doncic. And the start that he's gotten off to in his career very reminiscent of what LeBron James was able to do in the early 2000s with the Cleveland Cavaliers. So those are the reported games on the Lakers schedule. And of course, on top of that, a lot of games to look forward to. And throughout the entire 2022 23 campaign will be cooking you up with the best Lakers coverage. So with that, I do want to ask you this. When we talk about some of these opponents, who is your least favorite team in the NBA? I want you to give me a team name down in the comment section right now. Lakers have some pretty good rivalries. Boston Celtics, Golden State Warriors. Who do you hate the most, though? Let us know right now. Patrick Beverly sparking some Lakers rumors on Sunday night after this tweet from Shams Charania saying the first Lakers Clippers game of the upcoming season scheduled for October 20th at Crypto.com Arena. LeBron James, Anthony Davis against Kawhi Leonard and Paul George again for the first time since December 22nd, 2020. And with Patrick Beverly putting up the prayer emoji, Kind of goes to show you, maybe he wants to go on the other side of that rivalry. We know that he used to play for the Clippers. Now, does he want to play for the Los Angeles Lakers? Here's what he had to say back in May on ESPN when he was making a couple of those get-up appearances. If I was a free agent, and if me and Minnesota at the time, before the trade, obviously, with Rudy Gobert, didn't agree to a number, then yes, I wouldn't even hesitate just to be able to play with the great like LeBron, be able to pick his brain, be able to be a star in whatever role that I have, playing alongside Russell. So Westbrook, fantastic, playing for the Lakers, couldn't ask for a better job. Now, I'm not sure playing with Russell Westbrook and alongside him is fantastic, but playing with LeBron James definitely would be ideal for Patrick Beverly, and I think he'd be a pretty good fit alongside LeBron, whether LeBron is manning some of those ball handling responsibilities or if it's Beverly or if he's playing off ball with the combination of guards on this Lakers roster. I think the Lakers need this type of dog. They need a guy who can provide toughness to this Lakers roster because over the last couple of years with the Lakers failing to make deep playoff appearances last year coming off that dismal campaign, they need some toughness on this roster, and that's the injection that Beverly gives every single team that he's on going all the way back to his early NBA career up until the present day. Nine points per game last year with the T-Wolves, of course, helped lead them to the playoffs once again. That's another consistent theme for P-Bev. Every team that he's on, 
really, they end up making it to the playoffs. Really good steal guy, about a block per game, too, given his size. I think that's really impressive. And the numbers from three last year, down as compared to years previous. But let's just hope that if he goes to the Lakers, he starts knocking down those three-pointers at about a 37% clip, then make, that makes him a much more, more valuable asset offensively for any team that he's on, and if it's the Lakers, obviously for them. So your level of interest in Patrick Beverly is where on a scale of 1 to 10. 1, don't want him. 10, all in. Let me know once more in the comment section right now. Now it is summertime, and some of these hot summer deals are fantastic. It allows you to save money, and you can save money on these Lakers hats. A bunch of different styles available, whether you like the flat brim or the dad hat style. All you got to do, head to chatsports.com slash Lakers hats for these deals to apply for you. We already ran through a couple of the flat brim new era fitteds. How about this dad hat style? Different colors, different logos, different styles. Some of these hats up to 60% off, but you must use that link at the bottom of your screen so that Fanatics knows that Chat Sports and the Lakers Report sent you. I'll put that link in the comment section and the description of this video. Carmel Anthony had a pretty solid season for the Lakers last year. Is that the only season, though, that he's going to rock the purple and gold? Could Carmelo go back to Denver, the team that drafted him after that national championship run under Jim Beheim with the Syracuse Orange? Hoops Wires... Sam Amico said the speculation around the NBA is that the Nuggets could have interest in Carmelo. And Melo back to the Mile High City would obviously be a pretty good talking point and a pretty good story. That's where he started his Hall of Fame NBA career before going to the New York Knicks after that trade. And it just didn't work out in Denver. They failed to make deep runs in the playoffs, and that was really the same story once he went to New York City, the mecca at Madison Square Garden. But for him to potentially end his career where it started, it's always a pretty good story. Now, that would spell the end of Melo in Los Angeles. And if he's no longer on this roster, then this is the supporting cast for the purple and gold. And this bench unit, huge question mark. You have the star power, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and if you want to put Russell Westbrook in that category, you can. I won't because I don't think he's a star player at this point. Solid player, no question. Star, no. But this is the Lakers supporting cast. Austin Reeves, Kendrick Nunn, Lonnie Walker the fourth, Thomas Bryant, Damian Jones, Taylor Horton Tucker, Stanley Johnson, Troy Brown Jr., Juan Toscano Anderson, and Wenyan Gabriel. Then a couple of those two-way guys. We'll see if they can crack the roster as well throughout training camp as well as the preseason. So you lose Carmelo Anthony, you lose a guy who last year was pretty good shooting the three ball around 40 percent from long range and downtown so a little bit of a blow there but you can make up for it elsewhere on this roster to really round out the show do you want to talk about lebron james here has not yet signed that contract extension he's eligible to sign it two years nearly a hundred million dollars but as of now hasn't inked th that contract so has until june 30th of 2023 to sign that extension Tim Botems thinks that he should not sign that contract extension with Los Angeles, at least as of right now. And this is something that we talked about over the last couple of weeks, like the future of the Lakers. There are some question marks there. It is in doubt whether or not they can sustain their winning ways. And with LeBron James getting older and older, 38 years old at the end of the calendar year, he wants to be on a team or go to a team that has a chance to win NBA championships. And if the Lakers aren't one of those organizations, does he go elsewhere? Here's what Tim Bontemps had to say. If LeBron signs a max extension this summer, the Lakers are stuck in the exact same situation they are now. And they are going to be in that situation moving forward because they have no other contracts on the roster to trade. They have no other ways to create salary to go get other players on their roster. If I am LeBron James and the Lakers, and I am working together for the best path forward, that to me is the only best path forward is to wait until next summer. Opt out, give the Lakers flexibility at, uh, around him, <clears throat> and then fill in a number late on. Just exactly, excuse me, what the Sixers did, which allowed them to get P.J. Tucker and Daniel House this summer. So basically what James Harden did was he allowed the Sixers to get some more help. And for the Lakers organization, LeBron needs some more help. So the thought process from Tim Botemps, LeBron doesn't sign that extension this offseason, he sees how this upcoming season transpires, and then next year takes a little bit of a pay cut. Look, we're talking about LeBron James, right? The highest grossing NBA player of all time. And if he 
takes less money. It's not like it's going to dent his paycheck or his pockets or his bank account all that much. It does allow the Lakers to bulk up the roster around him. As for what Richard Jefferson had to say about LeBron signing that max deal, LeBron James has not done enough as a Laker to be on that list. Bron, he's been there now. This is his fourth season, right? They've been in there uh, for four seasons, two years. They haven't made the postseason. One year, they lost in the first round. And one year, they won a championship. So that's where Richard Jefferson's equation and his thoughts come into play. And for a lot of Lakers fans out there, they love the greats of this franchise. Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, Magic Johnson, the long list of future Hall of Famers, they view those guys as lifelong Lakers, as true Lakers. They don't view LeBron James in that equation because he's only been here a couple of years and has only had that one NBA championship, and he doesn't feel authentically like a Laker. So you can see where the fan base is coming from with all of the greats that they've been able to root on over time. Now, I will tell you this about LeBron. He has not had Anthony Davis on the floor enough for him to help maximize this Lakers roster. Look, LeBron is going to be 38 years old in December, and there's no question that LeBron would have benefited from having Anthony Davis on the floor more because as the mileage continues to add up and the tread wears on his tires, he just needs some help around him. And last year, he didn't have it. The year before that, he tried to do everything that he could to will the Lakers to that first-round series against the Phoenix Suns. If they had Anthony Davis, I think that they could have competed for back-to-back -back NBA championships. So the health of Anthony Davis is critical for the future of LeBron James and, in turn, the success that he has and will be remembered for with this organization. So what do you think, Laker Nation? Is LeBron a, quote, real Laker? Let me know down below in the comment section why for yes and for no. And before we hop on out of here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Even though it's the slow part of the NBA offseason, we're bringing you the best Lakers coverage. YouTube.com slash Lakers TV or hit that red sub button.